What's up, everybody? You are listening to Beyond the Breakdown with Six Scars. I am your host, JT, and I am joined tonight by my friend, mentor, and dude who has more collaborations than he does STDs, Steve. Did you turn that light off? No. It's a pain in my ass is what it is. I'm sorry, JT. I'm sorry. Welcome to the world of C's. <laughs> You know what? I'm just gonna have to. I'm gonna have to go back out of the front porch. <laughs> well, so th- this, this is what this is. This is the life of seed chaos, absolute chaos. Am I right, my dear? Oh, it's chaos, all right. Yes, <laughs> I went on the see, folks. I went on the back porch because there's less traffic, but the lights motion sensored and it goes off. But we're we're back out. We're going back out to my favorite chair on the front porch, baby. He's going to roll with the punches. That's what it's about. <laughs> oh, man. So, dude, I'm really stoked for this one, man. Uh, I've been wanting to get you on this since the beginning of the damn podcast. And our schedule's finally lined up. So, I'm really stoked on this. JT, you you come here often or you just do it alone at home? Well, you know, it depends. Sometimes I'm You're watching videos. You're making way here, sir. I mean, you know, you know, like the the dad rock botch job that you did for uh, Breaking Benjamin got me feeling some kind of way. And I was like, yes, I, yes. I, I need to clone him and just keep him in my pocket. OK, so weird topic to start this off with, but I'm curious. OK, so are you a person when you get hooked on music like do you do you listen to like a full album and just like do it on repeat or do you just do like a song? And just like repeat, 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 you know what I mean? And then until, you know, your brain's like, okay, let's find something else we like. I think it depends, man. Like there's certain bands that I'll listen to and I'll listen to that album like religiously. Mm -hmm. Uh, Then others, I'll listen to a single because depending on the band, only the singles are worth the, the while sometimes. I've always been kind of like an album guy. Now, obviously, like you just said, you know, it depends on what we're listening to you know some mm-hmm. bands have albums you just listen to start to finish others you know it's just kind of a song here and there and then the rest is just it's just there you know what i mean yeah. but uh, i'm typically an album guy like i've been i literally i've been going through the first three breaking benjamin albums of last week and just can't go wrong way. like a little bit of a behind the curtain but me and him had a conversation yesterday over voice messages for like 15 minutes just talking about breaking Benjamin. <laughs> <laughs> In case you didn't know, it's one of my favorite bands, everybody. Like, yes, I can't yes. really help it. <laughs> so, I mean, we'll we'll kick this off, man. And uh, you, you you already know what I'm going to ask you. But, I mean, let's, let's talk about your early beginnings, man. How did you find music? How did what? How did you find music? Oh, dude, music... I, I was I was born into a family of musicians, if you will. Um, on my dad's side, uh, everyone was mainly like old school style country, like religiously, like that's what they were about. And then you go over to my mom's side, like they were more like the classic rock, you know, like when they, you know, they were like very much the rock and rollers. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. Uh, my mom listened to hip hop and whatnot too. Like I grew up on anything from 90s hip hop to uh, stuff like frankie valley in the four seasons um oh wow jo- john mellencamp dude like anything and everything between nothing was ever off limits nothing was like it, it, that's just how that's just how it was you know what i'm saying and from a very very young age like i just always knew i wanted to I always mainly wanted to be a singer and but I really is one of them things like I, I didn't know how 
Um, mm-hmm. And I never had the balls to do it. Like I had opportunities to try and do stuff, you know, but like I always clam up. So guitar was actually like my first real dive into music. It was guitar was my first love. Um, played guitar for years. Um, and I, I still do to this day. Like honestly, like on a lot of nine stitch methods um, work, like Yeti and I, you know, a lot of times he's kind of like a rhythm player mm-hmm. and I'm more of a lead. So, you know, we get to mess around with stuff like that. Uh, but yeah, yeah. And uh, it wasn't until, let me see here, what year did 9SM start? 9SM started in late 2015 or 2016, something like that. But um, whenever I reached out to Josh, because at the time, he was in a band called 5AM at the funeral home. And I played in a band with my brother called Somber Chronicles. We were like a new mo- new metal uh, metalcore band. And I played guitar and I did backup vocals and stuff. And my brother was the main vocalist and screamer. Um, but to, I, it, it just kind of come down to like always nine stitch method. Okay. Hold on a second. I'm getting jumbled up here. That'll happen a lot tonight, by the way. Um, how, how, how mine and Yeti's paths crossed was he was booking shows out of Butler okay. and he ended up booking us. Cause I lived right down the road from the venue. Um, they were booking out of at the time we played shows together. Um, and then actually his ex singer from 5 a.m. at the funeral home was like, yo, you should go and like hook up with Yeti. You guys could probably do something cool. And I was like, all right. So I hit him up and uh, that the rest is history, dude. Like it was just kind of like meant to be. It was weird. Um, I mean, it was a rough go for a while because Josh was obviously already a really good guitar player. But like it was my first foray into doing lead vocals and stuff. And it was it was rough. <laughs> but it was dude it was, uh, I mean, it it was bad you know it was, um you mentioned nine stitch method and uh you, you know your boy had to wear the shirt tonight so dude well okay i'll tell you what we'll go ahead i'll go ahead i'll make it we haven't announced it officially yet but um not that the band broke up or anything just life's been life's been very very crazy for us the last couple of years but uh we are going to be having our first show back and like a year yeah november 2022 year, yeah yeah we're yeah we're gonna be having our first show back um in april so we're pretty pretty damn stoked about it dude that's gonna be sick because yeah. i remember watching the footage from the last one and that was amazing yeah dude. The, yeah that shirt you that shirt that you're wearing that was the that was our last show was uh the ep release party for that and then life kind of went to shit and we haven't <laughs> I mean, we still talk to you, everybody, because that's something everybody asks me all the time. They're like, oh, like, did you guys have like a falling out or whatnot? Because like you're really focused on seeds and whatnot. And it's like, well, it, that's just life. Like yeah. we just haven't had, you know, it, it's just been crazy with our schedules not lining up and whatnot and different things we got going on in life. And now, dude, like I love Yeti like a brother, dude. You know, we talk, you know, make, you know, we make sure to you know talk and whatnot. And uh, the last show we threw a couple of weeks ago over double dealing where i book shows out of now um he come out and whatnot and he was like like man like i want to do like i miss this and he come up on stage and he sang the song tides with me oh uh, damn dude yeah so like he was like dude like i want to get up on stage i'm like i didn't originally have tides in the set list i'm like well fuck it like if you you love tides you know that's on like the back of your hand i said let's just go ahead and do that you can just hop up on stage with me so we did it was fun and then by the end of it, dude, like, it was just like, dude, like, he's like, I missed this. I'm like, I fucking miss it too, dude. Like, let's do it. Let's get it back. I'm like, I already have the next show booked. I already know what show I'm going to put us on. Like, we got two months. Let's let's get the song practiced up, songs practiced up, and let's get it going. You know what I'm saying? Fuck yeah, man. Uh, for those wondering why I'm leaning down toward the microphone. <laughs> That's okay. If, you, if, I do, if I do this, oh, that just means I'm trying to listen. Me. Don't take offense to it. <laughs> You know, listening to metal doesn't affect your hearing at all. I promise. <laughs> uh, let's see. Will Brawley said he finally found his real daddy. Hi, Daddy Pat. All right, William. <laughs> Will's the man. Go ahead and give that man a plug. I will. Will is a uh, good friend of the podcast and mine and Pat's. And he also has his own podcast called The Liar's Pacifist. 
uh, he's doing a lot of great, great yes, stuff over there, and I can't wait to see where he goes with it. I can't, I can't praise him enough. Like he's, 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 he's doing great with it. So keep it up, Will. You'll always get a shout out every single fucking time you come on here with me. Apparently, <laughs> <laughs> he also said, "When are we getting an edema cover?" You know, I could probably make that happen soon. Well, you see, here's here's the thing. I'll I'll go into the craziness real quick. That because uh, okay, so like I said, nine nine SM's coming back in April. So here in two weeks, I go out to uh, Lakewood, Ohio, to play with Messmaker, and I'm in the process. What I'm trying to do is finish up another small EP. And get it wrapped up and done so I can have it rehearsed for in May. I'm not going to say too too much right now, but it's a cool announcement that'll be coming in the upcoming weeks. But um, so I have one song finished. I have another song like I got ninety percent of it done. So I, I was working on it yesterday. Today we had cheer comp and all that stuff. Tomorrow I'm going to try to finish up the last of the second song for this EP. And then I'll go back to work on Monday and then starting Wednesday, I'll be in full rehearsal mode for Seath until the show comes up. And then after that show, I'm going to finish the last track for the EP and then we'll begin 9SM rehearsals for April. Dude, I don't, I don't understand where you find time. I just, I just gave myself a panic attack. Just talking about that. It's just, dude, like, that's I just the life I live, over. man. Uh, you know, I'm a, Dad, daddy rock star, you know, st- steel mill worker by day, family man by night, and rock star wherever I, the hell I can fit it in. Well, I mean, like over the last year or so, dude, you've really ramped up the releases for Steve. Like you, you're putting something out, it seems like every fucking month. <laughs> La- last year was a, I was really, really proud. I felt last year, besides, and, and we'll go into this later, um, besides the, room 409 ep that that's really the only release i don't like that i put out last year but like it it was a really prolific year for me um let me see if we put out psalms of the dead the better left unsung and unread um dead prophet alive debuted its first ep um killer and i i did all the lead vocals on that uh those dropped around the same time and then we did Room 409, Cypher of the Morning Star, yes. um, Delenda, and then I started dropping singles from uh, the, t- the two double EPs that I'm dropping next week from uh, Good Morning After and uh, uh, As the Angels Sing Our Laments. <laughs> oh, how- I'm just going to stop the title. Uh-huh. It's really, I did it stupid long. Josh makes fun of me every time. He's like, why do you got to do this? I'm like, I don't know. It's, it's cool. dude." I remember being told that my uh, album titles were too long. And I was like, you, you need to go fucking listen to Steve and look at the well, album titles. Yeti, Yeti makes fun of me because like I go out of my way to, cause I, I try not to say, especially in the new metal genre, you know how it is. Like everything I see is gray. All I feel is, hey, you know what I mean? Like, I try to mix it up. I don't like the cuss of my music. Um, So, you know, I I go out of my way to try and find different words, you know, synonyms, anonyms, and whatnot, you know. Um, And, like, it's funny. I'll send him lyrics, and he's like, great, I got to go grab a fucking thesaurus to see what you're talking about. (laughs) I've gotten gotten comparisons to Corey Taylor in that way, except I don't say fuck, you know, every other word, like he does in a lot of his early releases. I mean, that actually brings me into a a question I wanted to ask you, man, is like where you get your lyrical themes from, because it's very philosophical. Lyrically, I would say I draw a lot from Pete Leffler from Chevelle and Chino Marino from Deftones. Mm. I like to my my way of lyricism and it I like to sometimes less is more. I don't Mm -hmm. like to have. A huge, long, you know, lyric. My lyrics typically aren't very long, but I try to paint the image 
for the listener whenever they're reading along. Um, you know, I I feel doing sometimes. You know, a lot of times it's cool, and a lot of artists do it. Like uh, Smile Empty Soul, for example. That's a really okay. straight to the point. You know, here's what it's about. You know, and there, you know, you know exactly what he's singing about right then and there. But a lot of times, it's fun to not know what they're saying, and you could take it so many different. You know, there's so many, and that's why what's cool about it is, to me, people can take that and they can carve their own niche in mm -hmm. what they you know want it to be and what they take from it and how it resonates with them. Because to me, that's the beauty of music. Yeah, no, dude, I completely agree. Because I mean, that's kind of what it was like for the first album that i put out man there's a lot of metaphors and you know different meanings behind each song that can be contrived from it and i was like i wanted somebody who listened to it to have their own experience with it versus like a streamline this is what that one is yeah uh pat said something like Father Mucker's gonna get heck to pay. Poopy days always be coming best. Oh, Jesus, I'm having a stroke <laughs> reading this. <laughs> All right, fair enough. <laughs> what the oh, God. You know, this might be, this episode might be a shit show, but we're having fun. No, that's what matters. <laughs> Like the wait the ass hit by a car. <laughs> now he apologizes. Yeah, <laughs> he was smart. He got the plug first. <laughs> business, business one on one. Oh man! All right, try to recover this, um, this, this, this shit show. <laughs> so, <laughs> going into your sound a little bit, man. The the thing I love about your music is that. You have such a unique style, man. It's like you combine, you combine. I've I've said it to you before. You combine like Tim Williams from from Blood Simple, and you combine like Marilyn Manson, dude. I I love you for the Tim Williams reference. <laughs> I really do because Tim Williams is one of my all time favorites. On it, and I I see where people get the Marilyn Manson. Um, one of my friends, uh. And she's a model, uh, Mad Kitty. Whenever she first, because we were all on the, because in 2019, Nine Stitch Beth decided to Brutal Business Entertainment, mm -hmm. which I would later go on to run. But she was one of the models with that. And our very first show um, that we played where the label kind of got to see us and what we were about, she said, you sound kind of like a heavier Marky Chavez from Edema. And I was like, oh, oh, oh yeah, dude. that's what's up. Um, <laughs> no, uh, it, it's kind of crazy because I don't know how it was for you. Like, I honestly, well, let me see here. When did I say 9SM started? 2016, uh, 2015. 2015. It was like, I didn't start singing until then. Like singing, singing. Um, like I always, the hardest, like when I, I could always kind of sing. I really couldn't, but like, I kind of, but like, I never found my voice. And that was kind of the issue. Like, that was the thing whenever I first started singing with Josh is I didn't know um like what i wanted to do and where i wanted to go and it was kind of like i all i i used to try to sound like ben burley and like uh sean morgan from seether and scott's that you know like i wanted that post grunge yarl you know oh yeah oh yeah I'm, you know but like my voice just isn't like that um as time went on and it was never something like i was like all oh, like i'm gonna imitate like it's just kind of what i found where it worked and as time went along and I learned techniques and whatnot, um, you know, I fell in love with like Damian Starkey from Burn Season, uh, Tim Williams, um, Billy Keenan, Keaton from Scrape and Audio Topsy. Ooh, there's a deep cut. Yeah, like I, I, I'd say like those three are like my top three, like definite main influences because like I have like I can sing. But I'm not like I'm not a trained singer. I'm not a pretty singer. Like my voice, it sounds like I'm gargling gravel and nails. You know, it's real rough and yeah, it's really raspy. You know, and it was kind of like okay, like, and I learned over time how to be able to project better, breathe from my diaphragm, 
learned how to use fry techniques to where like I could pitch screen. I'll say Chester Bennington because he's the more popular one, but like guys like Tim Williams and Billy Keaton, like them guys have, you know, they're just, you know, but their pitch is like, it's, you know what I mean? Like they could be screaming, but singing at the same time. You know what I'm saying? Like there is actual notation in there. Yeah. Yeah. Um, a, a really good example of that modern is um, architects. The band. Yeah, yeah. You see, I I know of them. I've heard a couple. But like, that's honestly, yes. Uh, Sam Carter's their vocalist, right? Yeah, and, yeah. Like, no, he's famous for that. He was definitely one of the ones that I'll say made that popular in the you know what we have today for metalcore and whatnot. He was def- yeah, he was definitely a pioneer in that and bringing that into like a niche in the genre. Yeah, and where before like there was a lot of. You know, you had your gutturals and stuff like that, but then you had, um, like the higher pitched emo, mm-hmm. the you fry. know, type vocal. Like that's kind, you know, what I mean. Like that's kind of where it was. And then when Sam Carter, you know, when Architects started coming along, like singers began to implement that, you know, pitched screaming, you know, and vocal style a lot more. Yeah, and I kind of. I hate that there's so many copycats now of architects because like now I can't listen to architects, <laughs> but um, Will said, Pat, your voice is exactly what I look for. Imperfect, but also powerful, passionate, unique, all around badass. The best singers for heavy music are always to me, the ones who aren't like every vocalist of a heavy style of music. Forgive me for my face. I'm not good at accepting compliments. I will see what's funny is I was going to tell you the exact same thing that uh, Will told me that he tells people when he's introducing them to six scars. It's like, he's not the prettiest vocalist, but he'll, he'll, he'll basically get you to where you want to (laughs) be. Well, that's like, to me, well, my favorite singers are like, yeah, look at, I know people are going to roll their eyes when I say it, but like, look at Kurt Cobain and Nirvana. I love Nirvana, man. Always have. Like now, great. Now, but, but like in general, like never mind, never mind's an amazing album. You know that was obviously their catapult to success and fame, and that that was really really produced. But you look at like In Utero, Bleach. and um even uh even like Bleach and whatnot, like he's a good singer. It's there, but he's not always quite on point. But like, dude, the emotion just grabs you and brings you in. Another one. Not so much nowadays. I'm talking back in like the Worship and Tribute album and everything you ever wanted to know about Silence. Um, Daryl Palumbo from Glassjaw. Oh, like man. there's there's times he's off key, you know, but it, it's just he's just so into it, and he like you just you feel it clutching your chest and pulling you in, you know, like that. That is what it's about. Um, and honestly, like I had the other day, um. Cy from Unsigned Showcase, he did a review um, on his station, uh, Unsigned Showcase. But he, he did a review of Cavalier Dualities, and he got to the last track, In Two. And like he got done with the song, and he was like, wow, I legit feel sad. I felt like a presence physically pulling on my body. And like to me best compliment a musician can can get especially as a vocalist you know what i'm saying i uh i watched that video right before you came on to the podcast man that that was like that that video uh of his review man it was really something to hear like he he broke it down too yeah oh dude sai is a if you're okay if you're a band now sai's channel has gotten pretty big honestly it's pretty cool too because he I thought of it before he said it on his channel, but like I was thinking whenever I, after I sent him the stuff for Cavalier Dualities, I was like, dude, it's been four years since him because he did a lot. He did a lot of work for me um, in helping the bands when I ran Brutal Business Entertainment. Oh, um, no. Okay. But, he, he, but dude, the dude not only, like, he provides such quality coverage. Like, he's legit. He doesn't just listen to it and go, you know like a lot of channels dude like he you know he just he he listens and he's a producer too he's a very very talented musician as well um 
and you know like he breaks it down and he really goes into depth about it that's what i love like you could tell he's not doing it for some kind of clout or with like he, he just the man loves music and that's what's awesome about it but and so to get a to get a comp and he's very particular like he pays a lot of compliments and stuff but like he's not a, he doesn't just say oh this is cool you know and this is awesome for every track like i've seen him give negative reviews before and but like to get that compliment from him that meant a lot to me yeah well i mean like just watching that video of him just mm -hmm. watching it you could you could tell the passion that he has for yep. what he does like it just pours off of him like he was talking i think about um the second track on that ep um uh not medicate but Mom. smile and he was talking about how the bass drops out yeah and then he's like it's acting like a drum beat, but there's actually no drum beat. It's literally yeah. just the bass. And he's like, how it syncs up perfectly with your voice. And I was like, dude, this guy gets it. Like, he actually understands, like, sonically yeah. what is being accomplished in the instrumental. And you don't see that much. Like, you'll get these people that react to it and they're like, oh man, that's great. And then yeah. that's literally the video. Another, another podcaster guy, or not podcaster, um, review guy uh heavy metal over a six pack's always been pretty cool about their reviews i've gotten good reviews and positive reviews from them but like they act you know what i mean but like they're actually reacting and whatnot to it like that yeah. that's my thing like don't just sit, like talk about it you know what i'm saying yeah i've been wanting to dive into that like the re reactions and what but it's just a matter of all right i have this much time today do i want to try to do this or do i want to record i'm going to record <laughs> man here, here's the thing like i'm kind of torn on it is because one the time the amount of time that i can put into it is one thing but two it's like i don't ever want to get to the point where i'm putting out a fake reaction exactly exactly yeah and it's like i'm i'm gonna call it like i see it man if i don't think it's yeah. good like you're not gonna get that emotion from me well uh which 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 channel was it the gent beard uh, you ever heard of him oh, he's got yeah, a yeah, yeah. yeah yeah he's from over i believe he's over in the uk um he uh he did a cool video for me whenever uh my album lucid dream come up i think he reacted to dislocate but like he got to a point where he kind of broke it down on his channel and he's like like i started this because it's passion you know and, and love you know yeah. but like it's kind of become a job and like I, i'm i'm kind of you know i'm lost in where i want to go and what i want to do like it's not the same like i don't have the same feelings you know it, it doesn't feel right anymore so he kind of took a step back and whatnot for a little bit he's still out there doing content and whatnot but like he taking it back to his roots hell yeah and see like to me youtube ends up being so oversaturated with um reactors like well it, 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 it it's like anything you know, we'll take it back a shit. Whenever I started playing in bands and whatnot, um, like actually playing out, we'll say 10 years ago. Um, like, you could get your music on Spotify, but like, it wasn't quite as easy to get them on no. all the platforms. And nowadays, like, it doesn't matter if it's a shit iPhone, or, you know, something you did on your iPhone. It can go, you know, everybody, you know, it, it's so readily and easily accessible. And then two, I'm even going to go as far as to say, like, that's kind of the world we live in, thanks to COVID. Yeah. Yeah. Because COVID we, had a lot to do with that. We had to adapt. We had to adapt everything to COVID. Well, yeah. Well, 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 that, well that's the thing. Like, uh, I mean, like, before 2020, like, there was a lot of bands and whatnot out there that could record at home. Some of them be decent, but most of them, like, you know, they were demo quality. But when COVID hit, dude, and people couldn't go anywhere, like a lot of people really, really knuckled down. And nowadays, you don't have to go to a million dollar studio to have a legit industry ready. You know what I mean? And pay thousands mm -hmm. and thousands of dollars. You know, you could go get a really, really like radio ready quality track for 500 bucks. Oh, yeah. You know, it, it's just, you know, um, and just the, the landscape of everything. Hell, even like when I got Brutal Business in 2020 and I ran that for two years, um, even since then, like every the, the whole 
it, it's all so different now. Yeah, it really is. And that it was is. kind of the learning curve going into it was because Garrett, the ex, um, AKA the artist known as Skippy Ickham, he, uh, like we played shows. That's what we did to get the, the brand out there. You know what I'm saying? Like, yeah, we did social media and whatnot, but like it was like our big focus was shows, but that got ripped away from us. And he, when he was stepping out, he was like, I'm going to bury it or I'm going to give it to you. And I was just like, Oh, okay. I'm, it's not every day an opportunity, you know, pops in your lap like that. So like we did a lot of really cool shit in my tenure there. Um, that was a really, really crazy time. I learned a lot about myself and, uh, I took a lot of good lessons from it. And I know two years, I aged 10 years. Like you can literally see looking at photos of me 2019. And then what I look like now, like it's night and day. <laughs> I mean, you know, the stresses of the business will do that. Well, stresses of the business and dude, I'll just, how do I want to put this? Politely. Musicians are a fickle creature. Yeah. Yeah. Um, you know, there, and it's like anything. There's good people out there. There's shitty people out there. You know, you got peak. And the thing is, is the market is so competitive and crazy right now. People thought it was hard before. It's it's oversaturated. It's crazy. Like if you're and you got to have money, it's like anything, it, you know, unless you get something viral on social media out of luck, like you got to have the money to spend to get you in the places that are, you know, that are going to make it count and move you up the ladder of the chain. But um, yeah. Well, I mean, you're part of DI Records now, aren't you? Yes, yes. Uh, yeah. I am currently um, both Seethe and Nine Stitch Method are recording and performing artists under the label. Um, I'm part owner. Uh, I really don't like. I bring in opportunity here and there, and like whenever the I'm no. out. How you doing, sweetie? What's um, up, buddy? Like whenever you know, like. For example, stuff like amplify the noise, you know, like whenever I see things that'll help the bands, you know, I'll bring that to Dakota so he can, you know, work his magic. Um, I've cut over the last year, I've taken on the role of a show promoter because so many it's just one of them things like there's so many places that have closed around these parts, and it's like, okay, well, I've played here, we have a good rapport. Um, and I'll be real with you. I've gotten shit about the place I book at. You know, we had a couple clunker shows last year where we just didn't have a good attendance, which that happens at any time you're a promoter. It happens. It's not all, you know, packed full hot, you know, but I am blessed to be working with a venue that actually pays the artists. Yeah. Like, like we've been able to, you know, I mean, it's not great. You know, it's not 500 bucks or anything, but they're, if you come and perform a double deal and now, like you're walking out of there with more than five bucks that you got from the door split. You know what I'm saying? Hell yeah, dude. Yeah. Uh, Melanie said that she's heading to a show, but she came to hang out while Amanda is driving her. So just awesome. want to give a huge shout out to the Melanie Nick's podcast. Uh, what show? Yeah. Yes. The Exus podcast is awesome. Out. They've done yeah. a hell of a lot for both myself and our man. Yeah. Yeah. Shout out to them, man. Mel Nothing is luck. an absolute sweetheart. So is Manda. Um, a little bit of a peek behind the curtain that hasn't been released is Mel and I are working on a track. And then Manda is also supposed to be featured on a Six Scars track. Well. Red Hot Dog. JT, pepper. isn't that your second shameless plug of the evening? It is. You son of a bitch. It's almost like it's my podcast. Don't you know that I'm a big deal? You are. You are such a big deal. Dude, I ain't shit. I ain't you shit. really? I... Okay, so look. Uh, where... I'm just a normal Joe like the rest of us. No, no, no. So just now, trying here... to make our way through. Here's, here's what I will say, man. You and me have been friends now for what? Four or five years, I think. It's been Facebook. about four or five years. We've gotten real close over the last year and a half. Oh, yeah, yeah. And the very first time I ever sent you anything was literally uh, "Killing Time." That yes. that that song. Um, 
that was like a long, long time ago, it feels. But I'll never forget, I sent it to you, and you were like, this is really good. And we didn't know each other, uh, really. No, we just knew, like, it was just one of them things, like, oh, he's a musician, add. Like, that's all it was. So, fun fact, like, you were talking about Nine Stitch Method, and the reason I found you is because I was looking up Straight Line Stitch. Yeah, Nine Stitch Method, Straight Line Stitch, I could see it. It actually was the first one to pull up instead of Straight Line Stitch. And then I was like, well, who the hell is this? So I listened. I was like, oh, shit. <laughs> Do you remember what song it was out of curiosity? Let me grab my phone because I, I, it had to be an earlier one, man. To, uh, in two, if it was coming out in 2000, it was either something off of Jaywalking, Somnambulist, or it was. Uh, yeah. Yeah. It was. Yeah. yeah. Or uh, what, what EP did we put out that year? Zero Somatic. That didn't come out till later in the year, though. But yeah, uh, so like that was kind of the beginning of our journey. We'll 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 dive back into everything, man. But I I truly wanted to give you your just due, man, because like for those that may not know who are listening to this, Steve was on Better Off Dead, and Better Off Dead was the breakout. Like that's what actually put Six Scars on the map of people, and Pat is the one that mixed it. And he's also did a killer job on the bridge. And like, I mean, I, I can't tell you enough how much I appreciate you doing that, dude. Yeah. Wait, let me see. Let me remember how we did. Yeah. I, I mixed, mixed the vocals. Yep. And then and Guster, then Gust. Guster did the Mac. Yeah. He mixed it a little more and then um, did his magic and then he mastered it. That's the fucking G dude. Shout out he, to you. Think music. Oh, absolutely, man. You think music and Gus Wallner, if you guys can get the chance, follow him on Facebook. And if you need any kind of mastering, go to him. Mixing, mastering, instrumentals. Absolutely. Custom instrumentals and stuff that are great quality, great turnaround time, and yes. good prices. Gus is the man. I will Dude. scream that man's name to the heavens. Because honestly, if it wasn't for Yeti and if it wasn't for Gus, I wouldn't be where I'm at right now. Yeah, like those and, two, the, because Yeti was the one who took a chance on me. You know, I mean, like, you know, um, Yeti and my wife, because Beck was like, "You can do it. Don't be a pussy. Do it. You know, you want to do it. I know you can do it. Do it." And Josh was like, "Let's do it." Like it was just right from the get go. And then, a Gus lived lived in Brazil. He relocated this past year. Yeah, but him and I met over the inter- him, same same as you and me. Uh, it was uh, the uh, new metal for life. Forever, forever. Yes, it was that he was posting up because it was. It wasn't. Yeah, he was still kind of in the beginnings of starting his channel up. And I reached out and I was like, "Hey, man, uh, can I sing over one of your songs?" And, so, and he was like, <laughs> "All right, well, show me what you got." And um, I sent him. <clears throat> it would have been from Life After You, our album. Yeah, our album, Life After You. I sent him a couple tracks in that. The rest is history. We've written a fuck ton of music together. Um, he's done all the, the the mixing, mastering for all the C's work. <coughs> um, That's a lot. From Jay Walking Song to Bullet Stall for Nine Stitch Method as well. Like essentially oh, for Nine SM, he's become like a third. Like he he's kind of like the quintessential like third member. You know what I mean? The quiet. You know the sil- silent. <coughs> it uh what, what's the word i'm looking for the unsung hero yes 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 but yeah he's kind of like the yeah, yeah the silent member of the group you know because me and yeti obviously write the shit and you know perform it but like he does the bass he does the electronics and it's always cool because he never because like he's like i got something cool for you guys i want you to listen to it and like he'll throw something in there and, and we're just like we never would have thought of that dude hell yeah man you know, it's oh, always yeah. cool whenever he, you know, that's how you know he's really getting into it, you know, and he enjoys the songs is whenever he's, you know, <laughs> hyped and adding crazy shit to it. So we'll 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 get back on a little bit more of a track at least because it's a shit show anyway, so it doesn't really matter. But <laughs> <laughs> trying to be mindful of your time at least because I don't know, I don't want to keep you too long. Oh, you're good, but, dude. You're good. I'm just here to enjoy the company. 
Well, hell yeah. So I think your newest release right now is Away. Uh, yes, Away is the uh, single off of um, As the Angels Sing of Our Laments. And that EP will be dropping uh, on um, March 8th, next Friday. Hell yeah. Uh, this The track is very different than what you've put out before, man. Not just lyrically, but vocally. What was kind of the inspiration behind it? Oh, um, well, the that song that song is actually a happy song. Yeah, um, which is yeah, weird. The, the the two, um, because let me see. Yeah, the song "Spiral," which you'll hear on the eighth, and "Away" are essentially love songs to my wife. Where "Spiral" is just talking about like, dude, my wife. Like, I, I know it's cliche for a lot of things, you know, for a lot of people to be like, oh, like, my wife is, like, my best friend. No. Like, my wife is my best fucking friend. The shit that me and that woman have been through and the mountains we have conquered over the years. And, and that's kind of what Spiral's about. And it's just, you know, like, no matter what, no matter what downward spiral, you know, whatever, we're always together. We're always parallel with each other. Um, where Away, Away is more about the whole scene of being old and in a rocking chair, you know, looking back on all we've done, watching our kids grow up, you you know, that that's, that's the vibe of it, man. You know, it's yeah. Like the song is sort of pissed off and angry. It's not, it's not really, it's aggressive vocally in some places, but that's, that's what it's about, man. It's just about, you know, being at the end of our time here on this, you know, rock, and just looking back and being like, yeah, like we did it. You know what I'm saying? It's it's one of those tracks, man. I listened to it the first time when it first dropped. And I was like, I can't believe this is actually, I can't believe this is a Thief track. Um, I really listened to the lyrics, man. And it's like, it's emotional. It, it is, dude. Yeah. And, and it's funny. I'm, I'm kind of. I'll say this to you because I said the same thing to my brother a couple weeks ago. Um, I have a really bad habit of being really hyped about a song I put together. And then once I put it out, I'm like, it's fucking garbage and shit. I should have never, you know, but my brother sent me a message the other morning when he was getting ready to go to work. He was listening to it in his car on the way to work. He's like, I just want you to know, I listened to this song on repeat on the way home yesterday and on the way Oh, on the way to work, on the way home from work, and I'm doing the same thing today. It is, how do you say, fractured, haunting beauty, or something like that. Okay. And I was just like, man, why you got me like uh, I'm glad you said that, because I felt like the song was fucking shit. You know? I I honestly think it's one of your best tracks that you've put out. Well, man. thank you, sir. Like, for, for me, you can feel the emotion in your vocals. And you can feel the passion of each word that you're saying. And to me, that's what makes the best music. Um, well, thank you. Will Brawley, he also said that his wife is his rock, so he gets it. Hell yeah, man. That's what's up. Absolutely. You don't hear a lot of that in today's world. It's a very toxic world. Dude, honestly, if I ended up being single again, I don't know what the fuck I would do. Everybody, you... like, mm-hmm. it, it, it's all about, like, hooking up and whatnot nowadays. And, like, yeah, like, I'm, I'm fine. Yeah. I'm really happy in my relationship. I'll just stay right where the fuck I'm at. <laughs> he said, "So relatable, Pat." <laughs> oh yeah, man. Thank you. That's a thank you, Will. That's a huge compliment coming from you. Thank you. Yes, I appreciate that. Seriously, man. So I want to dive into one of my favorite tracks by you, man, and that's uh, "Blood." Blood. Oh, okay, okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. So. You don't necessarily have to say the meaning behind it, but what was the inspiration for that, man? Because you went, you went so, all to the wall on that. Oddly enough, um, because Good Morning Wrath and As the Angels of Men are coming out at the same time, I wrote and recorded As the Angels Sing of Our Laments, like end of tour, like fall going into winter of 2023. But that Good Morning Wrath, which that song is from, that was actually all recorded back in 2022. Um, okay. It was right around the time. I pretty, Gus and I pretty much put that whole EP together 
over the course of like a month and a half while we were getting ready to have um, our youngest son. And right after, because I had like a month off of work for uh, paternity or is it mater- no, paternity leave. So um, the latest single from that EP, Plunder, that was the first one. That was actually where we started. And that, that song went through a lot of, with, with the instrumentals, like we went through a lot of revisions with it. Um, so a- a- anyway, we started with that. And then when we got to Blood, um, we had, I had my son in the hall, you know, we had our son, he was born and we were home for two days. And then I ended up staying down with my daughter, um, down in Pittsburgh at children's hospital for a week. She had like a nasty kidney infection. And when I was there, like, you know, whenever she was napping and sleeping and whatnot, like Gus handed me this music and like, that's what I did. I wrote, you know, I wrote it right then and there. Um, there was some things going on in life. I won't out of respect for other people and other parties, I won't say what it was about, but the song is essentially like a horror. It's a horror story. Um, you know, it's, it's about not being able to, it, two, two people that couldn't be more toxic for each other, but they can't let go of one another. That's essentially what it's about. Okay. Okay. I was definitely getting the, the horror story vibe from it, but yeah. Well, yeah. Like it, it's like, yeah, it's like some kind of weird, creepy, you know, the way I wrote it out and everything, you know, and well, you, you ahead, released that and feather at the same time, didn't you? Um, okay. So here, here's uh feather was the first single off that uh, blood was okay. second. Well, here, here's kind of how this, so like, like I said, we had this Good Morning Wrath. We we me, me and Gus have had that EP since 2022, and I I wanted to release it, but like I was like, eh, not yet. And Feather, I believe, uh, Plunder and Feather were actually, I believe, the first two songs that were done off that EP. Um, so I was like, you know what, I'm going to release it. So I put out Feather on my wife and I's anniversary because Feather is a love song for my wife. Mm-hmm. And uh, so I released that at the end of October, and then I was like, "Man, like, I wanted, I want to show the duality of seed. Like, I got this rock, new metal, hard rock, rock side, and then I got you know the trap metal I've been doing. I wanted to switch it up, you know what I mean? And so I wanted to do like a double like release, and I had started putting together as the angels sing of our laments. So. Like I said, Feather was uh, released the end of October, beginning of November. So I let that go for a month. And then in December, I decided to drop two. I dropped uh, Beneath from As the Angels Sing of Our Laments and uh, Blood. And dude, Blood blood got a lot of fucking love right out the gate, dude. Honestly, it's so good, dude, dude. shout out to everybody who's jammed the fuck out of that song. I love that track. It hits hard. It rocks hard. It's just, but like that song, everyone was like, dude, yeah. And shout out to Nikki Carlson too. Um, she's the model that uh, was in the picture for the, you know, the, the artwork and whatnot. Hell yeah. Dude. I actually have to finish doing the mock-up for her shirt. I have to send her her shirt. I haven't forgotten Nikki, but no, she's an amazing model and actress and whatnot. Um, she, she really, really cool. Like I had a vision for it and I, I just hit her up randomly and I was just like, Hey, like, do you have this, do you have something in this vibe? And she was like, actually, yeah, I do. Hold on. And she sent it to me and I was like, that's fucking it. That's perfect. <laughs> you know? Well, so, yeah. yeah. Uh, Will said blood is epic. So no surprise. It's beloved. Yes. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Like, I remember first hearing it, man. And you're like the opening riff is just like wait this isn't Steve normally (laughs) uh it it gave me big nine stitch method vibes oh totally yeah well you figure you got the singer from nine stitch method you have the producer and like instrumental you know you have the producer and one of the instrumentalists for nine stitch method you know what i mean true that's very so You know, it, it, it was bound to kind of happen, you know, but I heard the music and I was like, dude, oh, uh. so yeah. I'll back it up a little bit here. And where you were talking about the uh, COVID era, 
Um, I think me and you have talked about it over the years before, but you also have a immune system problem, don't you? Yes. Um, I have an autoimmune disorder called idiopathic angioedema. And what it does is it does dampen my immune system. So I'm immunocompromised. Um, I also break out into like hives and allergic reactions randomly. Um, you know, I get hives a lot. Mm -hmm. Um, shout out to Allegra hive. I, if you're somebody who breaks out in hives and whatnot, it's like a dude, it's been a miracle drug for me. Um, and I've had instances with the, the disorder where my throat swells shut. Yeah. So I've had a bit rushed to the hospital. You know, they hit you with a like Molotov cocktail of steroids and antihistamines and whatnot, you know, and you feel like you're drunk and stoned for three days after the fact. So, I mean, I, I can't even begin to pronounce that, that disorder, but um, did that give you like any anxieties? from it always well that's um bec- I'll, I'll put it to you this because like i originally last year i wasn't planning on performing at all because like after every show i get sick i'm around people you know uh, hugging people handshaking sharing equipment and microphones you know like i'd always get sick and uh, to put it into perspective like the common cold like it's like getting a really really bad flu for me um it it just it 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 sucks um but i mean like i my doctors have me on a good you know it's not as bad as it used to be you know i'm i still get sick and whatnot here and there but i the doctors got me on a good medical regimen and stuff right now i have to carry around an EpiPen with me i haven't had to use it thankfully but um yeah i think like the worst bout i had it uh, the last like really, really bad was, uh, I was at work and, uh, I had a, I had a, uh, reaction on night shift and it was funny because like, it, it was just like going through the motions, you know, um, you know, I was all hived up. I looked like Mr. Fucking crabs. I was itchy. I felt like I was on fire, but the thing that scared me was, um, I started getting chest pains. So I called my lead over the intercom. And I told him to come to the office and I'm like, you're going to need to call an ambulance. I said, I got to go take a shit. I'll be right back. And it's like, I I walked out of the office and he's like, what? So he calls the ambulance to come to my work. And they're like, well, what's he doing? He's like, I don't really know. He told me to call the ambulance and he told me he had to go take a shit. And that's what he's doing right now. Uh, (laughs) My wedding ring, I had to, uh, I was swelling up so bad. My wedding ring, I couldn't get it off. I had to use vacuum grease. I barely got it off that way. Um, I don't, I had a silicone, uh, my wife got me a silicone ring, which I still really don't. It's just kind of like a, you were talking about phobias and whatnot. Like that's kind of like a, uh, like, like, I just can't, I can't wear it. This is, but like with the silicone one, you know, like I could cut it off or anything, you know, if I needed to, would, you know, I wouldn't lose circulation in my hand. Damn, dude. <laughs> Yeah, like I know we've talked about it before, but I mean to talk about it in that extent, I mean that's that could be damn near debilitating if you're not if you're not, you know. Oh dude, it's terrible. Like fall fall and winter, which are my favorite seasons, like dude, they're fucking terrible for me. I'm always sick. Uh yeah, I get yeah, it it's it's not fun. It sucks. So I know you did a whole album or a EP on phobias didn't you yes that was a uh, delenda uh the uh black rose of the epitaph so i know with them being phobias are they phobias that you actually have um okay so when i when that album was born out of so last year i hurt my shoulder last year um and this goes back i have uh it, it's a common thing like I, I, you know, I, I work in a steel mill, you know, 12, 13, 14 hours a day, mm-hmm. you know, when I work, um, a lot of physical work, you know, it's not the worst job in the world, but like, you know, it's very physical. Um, I have what's called, uh, uh, bone marrow edema. So a lot of times, like, you know, if I'm active, like the joints swell and whatnot, and it, it's not fun. Um, but, uh, I, so I was off work for that. 
And there's a old saying, an idle mind is the devil's playground. And, you know, I've had depression and whatnot for years. Um, I never really dealt with it. Like I, I was one of them guys that like, I'm a tough guy. I'll mm-hmm. bear the weight of the world on my shoulders. I don't, I don't need no medication or whatnot. And like during that time, you know, I, I was off for, I think a month or two from work. Uh, I ended up having a mental breakdown. It came out of nowhere. Uh, it, like his things, you know, outside of being injured and at home, like things were good. You know what I'm saying? Nothing bad or crazy. And I, I went out of my mind, dude. It was like somebody else, like I could see everything. I could hear everything, but it was like somebody else was, you know, steering the wheel and turning the gears in the cog. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Um, so I, it, it was really bad. Uh, I won't go into the full detail of it all, but, uh, you know, I signed myself in, got the help I needed and come out of it. You know, it, it was hell, dude, but you know, you got to go through hell, you know, to, to get out of it. You know what I'm saying? And, uh, and I, I, you know, and I deal with it every day, you know what I'm saying? Like, um, you know, but, I have good days. I have bad days, but I'm definitely a lot healthier minded. Yeah. yeah. Um, now than I was before I'm learning how to, you know, better coping mechanisms, better, you know, trying to express myself and outside of me, you know, like, like, you know, like just stuff in life, you know what I'm saying? But, um, dude, and if you're ever, ever, you know, if you're in that place to anybody that's watching this, get help, ask you are worth it. You know, the, the stuff that we hear up here, dude, it's all lies. Like, it's it crazy. It is. And and it's one of them things, like, people say, like, oh, well, you know, it's the coward's way out. Right? Like, I get what you're saying with that. But until you've experienced that, you don't understand it. Mm-hmm. And because, like, I've always been like, dude, dude, I have a beautiful wife. I have three. <coughs> I have three beautiful children. You know, I, I have a decent house. I have a good job. You know, I make music and, you know, chill and rock with cool people. You know, like I, you know, there's a, I love my life. You know, could I use more money? <laughs> Shit, couldn't we all? But, <laughs> you know, when that happens and you get to that place, like there's, like, don't be a hero. Reach out and ask. Yeah. That's yeah. my message. That's honestly, even though my music is a lot of bitching and screaming and rah, 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 like that's love. It, it, you know what I mean? It's really the main message I'm trying to get across to people. You're yeah. worth it. And first of all, thank you for talking about that. Um, I remember when you had messaged me afterwards and you let me know what was going on. Cause we hadn't yeah. been in communication. Um, I was just so glad to hear that you were doing better and in a better mindset. Cause I've, I've been there, man. Yeah. Uh, and like you said, it's not something you just get over. Like it's, it's no, no matter what anybody says, it's not something that you just one day wake up and it's gone. It's, it's an everyday. Yeah, battle. No, it is like a constant, constant fight. And honestly, like while music, you know, m- music's my catharsis, but uh, it, it's just kind of crazy how what's the word I'm looking for? You ever write a song and you're just kind of like, eh, like it works. It's good. It's cool. But then like later down the road, you write it and you're like, Oh, that, you know, like you have some sort of event that happens like Mm -hmm. that per se, or, you know, and you're just like, well, now that fucking makes sense where my brain, you know, where my subconscious was, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. It, you know, all the time, actually. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Um. So, I mean, I guess that will lead us into the other release that you said you're not so proud of. Right. And that was, is that room 409? Room 409. Ah, oh, man. Okay. So room 409, uh, let me see. I was, I was locked up, not locked up, but I, I was in the hospital. I think it was like late March, early April. And you can't do anything when you're in there. 
you know, you can't really r- write or you can't. So I kind of had it in my head of what I wanted to do. And I took experiences um, from that. And I put the pen to paper as soon as I got out. I found, because I wanted to do something a little different. I went with kind of like the corpse type vibe, yeah. you know. So, but I found a couple beats that I liked and put them down. And Gus was actually, um, he was in the process of moving and relocating at the time. And I, I was like, hey do this, get it done. You know what I mean? And thankfully he did it, but I was driving him crazy with it. But, uh, <laughs> but, um, yeah. Uh, so yeah, I put that out and I decided to, we, I'm going to say that was done within the first three weeks of me getting out. Um, and I held on to it till my birthday, just as kind of like a reminder, like, Hey, we made it one more year on the sun. You know what I'm saying? I do. And but I have yet to I won't play any of them songs live. I don't even I haven't on like I listened to the EP for a little bit after I put it up. I haven't listened to any of them tracks and I I won't perform any of them. I mean, I I can understand that it it may remind you of a time you don't want to revisit, yes, but it yes, is a exactly part of 100% that happened. Um I mean, damn, dude. Like you got a little bit deeper on me than I was expecting with that one, man. You made me kind of. I'm an open book, dude. No, I'm I know. an open book. I, I've I been just... through. I've I've had a really weird career. Like I, I can I can go on forever. That's all good, dude. Well, I know, man. It's just uh, like you know me, so I mean, those topics always always touch a nerve with me because it's mm-hmm. something yeah. I still deal with, you know. So it's when I see somebody else open up. It, it makes me smile on the inside because there's still such a stigma around it. Right. Yep. Especially, especially with men. Like, I mean, I get, I get hell all the time when I say that men don't open up and enough and it's like, they don't like we lead the suicide rate. I mean, yeah. it's, it's, it's a proven fact. Like Dude, I've been, this, this is going to sound ignorant what I'm about to say, but when I hear of people passing away, of natural causes or an automobile wreck or something like that. I'm almost relieved. Like, cause it's just suicide is such a common thing anymore. And it's just like, fuck dude. Yeah. Like just fuck. Like, I'm, yeah. you know, like obviously you don't want anybody to die, but like, I, you know, it's not something you want to say that they, you know, took their own life and whatnot. You know, it's really, really sad and tragic. It is. And you were talking about earlier, you know, how people call it the coward's way. And it's like, to me, I can't stand when people say that. Because to me, put yourself in their shoes and think about what was going through their head that made them think that was the only option. Yeah. Oh, dude, I'll be real with you. That day I was in here, like, I was saying the nastiest shit I could think of. I was like, he, he, my buddy Chris, uh, my buddy Chris and his wife Caitlin, my friend Caitlin, they were next door and like Beck went over and got them. And was like some shit's going down. So Beck and I had come to the conclusion I'm going to sign myself in. And like when I walked past Chris on my way out, I'm like, sup? Like I can't remember even what I said to him. But like when I got out and I went to go visit him, he was like, dude, he was like, that was not you. He's like, the look and what you said to me, he's like, I wanted to grip you up and beat the fuck out of you, which he could. The man's like 6'5", 300 pounds, and he's just fucking jack. you know what I mean? But he, he was just like, it wasn't you. He's like, he's like, something was in there, and it wasn't you. And I'm like, oh, believe me, I'm well fucking aware. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Yeah. You, you said earlier where it felt like, you know, you – didn't have control like somebody else was driving but you were just a passenger um i've been diagnosed with borderline personality disorder and like i do have what's technically called alters um and it's like that's a very real thing like you dissociate and you're watching yourself do the actions but you for the life of you cannot stop Repeat that last line again, buddy. Oh, I didn't hear you. Yeah. For the life of you, like you cannot stop what you're doing. Like you're watching yep. yourself do it and you want to stop. There's a part of you that wants to stop, but you physically cannot make yourself stop. And 
trying to explain that to people who've never been through it is ridiculously hard. It's just one of them. Now, is that like a? I don't. I don't want to downplay it and say mild, but is that is that like a form of schizophrenia? I mean, it like obviously I'm not a doctor, so I can't like do diagnosis or anything. But like from what I was told, it's a severe form of dissociation, mm-hmm. um, and it could also be part of DID, which is dissociative identity disorder, um, which is basically like multiple personalities. So like one can shift back, another can come forward, another can like you know so on and so forth. Um, a lot of the times that kind Here, of happens. Hold on a second. I gotta set you down for one second. You're good, man. While he's doing that, I'm gonna let my cat out real quick. I'm coming, JT. I'm coming. Hold on a second, buddy. There we go. I'm back. Perfect timing. My cat was wanting out. <laughs> Well, that was the problem. My cat's outside. Our lab's inside. And the dog's like, I want to play. I want to play. Come on, buddy. I want to play. And it's like, no, 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 no. Not right now. I've been ignoring her for like the last 30 minutes because I was like, I can't find a good spot to just get up and let the door open. But um, no, um, DID is uh, like a form where, like I was saying, where you have many alters and a lot of the times we dissociate and people don't realize it, but it's us splintering ourselves Mm -hmm. uh, due to like something that we've endured in the past. And it could be something you don't even realize you're going through or have went through, but your body and your mind will react that way as a safe, like a safeguard. You know, it's whenever you say stuff like this, be being, Diagnosed manic depressive and bipolar doesn't seem so bad. (laughs) Right? (laughs) It's like anything. It's like anything. I I, I tell my kids this all the time. No matter how good you are at something, or no matter how bad you are, how bad you think you have it, somebody's either better than you out there, or somebody has it worse than you. Yeah. Get off the pity party. Absolutely. Uh, especially when it comes to people using mental illness as a crutch. Like I, I end up seeing that quite a bit and it takes everything in my power not to call it out every single time. <laughs> oh dude. I know. I believe me. I hear you on it. Like, well there, well like that's something that yeah, I'm going to blame social media, but like depression and whatnot on social media, it, it's almost glorified. Yeah. You know, and especially in today's generation, it's weird. Like, I don't know. It, 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 it's just I'm making myself sound old here. But yeah, no, no like I, no. I, I see like, stuff on social media. And most of the time, like there's times I want to, I want to engage and just you know, be like, dude, no. But at the same time, it's just like it ain't, it ain't worth it. I'm not going to change the mind or anything. Uh, well, that's that's honestly, that's what the song uh, Beneath is sort of about. Is not okay. letting your traumas and whatnot define you. Okay. I, I've listened through to that one several times, so I need to go back and listen to that one again. Yeah. Um, you released Linear or Lanier. Um, was it the same time as Beneath? Well, was that the same time as what? Beneath. No, no, no. Lanier was, uh, would have been back in the late. Probably, yeah, because that album come out in August, so that would have been over the summer at some point. Oh, okay. You Wait, get... when did that album get released? I'm gonna say it was like late summer, some beginning of fall. Whenever I released that album, but yeah, no, um, was... <laughs> that song was just kind of, kind of, I guess you could say sort sort of that, like not letting your traumas and stuff define you, and like being like, okay, like I got to change something here. Yeah. Where do I start? Where do I go? And sort of finding that. So, I mean, where where you were talking about, you know, being being in where you were for that month, how did that really shift your outlook on life now? Um, I, I think understanding. Hmm. Why you always gotta ask me the hard question, motherfucker? 
<laughs> no, um, honestly, it, um, it, in learning how to do that, learning how to cope healthily and deal with stuff, um, and how to process things, uh, that, that was honestly like, learning. And two, like understanding that, cause like, I never knew I was bipolar. I was never, you know, diagnosed bipolar or manic, you know, I, I but whenever they said that and they were talking about it and I was learning about it, I was like, Dude, so many things make fucking sense now about how my brain operates and works. You know what I'm saying? It's just one of them things. Fair enough. I know. Uh, unfortunately, I got well. Not unfortunately, I, I got diagnosed with bipolar at like 12. So, uh, that's a whole spiel in itself. You, but... you had a head jump on it. Head start. Woo! Well, I mean, yeah. Like to be fair, all the surgeries basically caused it. <laughs> <laughs> well, and that's oh, okay. So, but that's another thing too. Like, whenever you know we were kids and whatnot, because you and I are the same age. Mm-hmm. Like, back whenever we were kids, when you got diagnosed, like you were almost looked at like you were insane. Oh yeah, dude. You, you know what I? You know, like like it was a real like like oh they're by you know. But now it, it's a common thing. You know, it's just like all right, it is what it is. We'll put you on a medication regimen that will hopefully you know, kind of balance you out a little bit, but you know, like when, when I first got diagnosed, um, my, my parents weren't this way, but like people we went to church with were, and they were like, Oh God, don't like, don't say that out loud. Da 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 da. I'm like, I'm sorry. I need help. Like I'm clinically depressed. What the fuck do you want me to do? Yeah. Yeah. No, no, no. Well, I, well, that's kind of, um, that's a subject because I grew up in the church. Like, JT, there was a, there was a point in time in my life where I was in the church seven days a week. I went to school at the church. Yep. Uh, we had Sunday morning service, Sunday evening service, Wednesday night service, and we had a bus route where we went around Butler, you know, and we picked people up that wanted to go to church. And that was on Saturday. On Saturdays, we would ride around and be like, "Hey, you coming tomorrow? We coming to pick you up?" You know, da 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 da. And um. The church we have nowadays, because like a lot of people try to get me to go to church and I don't go to church anymore. And it's not because I don't believe in Jesus and God and whatnot. You know, there's it's not that it's the fact that religion nowadays is weaponized to fit it, mm-hmm. to fit and propagate a political agenda. My boy speaking facts. Yep. That's actually what the song Wax is about. Really? I would not have gotten that one actually yep. if you didn't tell me. No, I have a, I have another song too um, on the release that I'm working on to come out in May. Uh, Coalesce. That's what it's about too. Okay. So yeah. and, and like that, and that's that's the thing too is like um, the song. Uh, let me see. What's another song I wrote? Uh, oh, Seraphic, Seraphic Rising. The the track number one off of the dead prophet alive vp Ah, that's what it's essentially about too okay um and funny enough i was listening to radiohead really really and and like paranoid uh paranoid android at the very end i don't know if you know this um so that song originally was supposed to be like god kills his children the very last lyric of the song god kills his children but the record label was like eh like god loves his children and I ended the the ending lyric on uh, that song is I was just listening to it earlier. Um, only God's children. Ah, only God's children partake of the bread, where blood and bones drift them. I can't remember. I'll have to go back. But it was definitely inspired by uh, Radio Radiohead's Paranoid Android. Oh, damn. That song. I'll have to go back and check that one out because I listened to that EP a couple times. Yeah, but man, I try to keep up with you. I really do. It's just, shout out uh, to Bill and Dead Prophet of Love. <clears throat> yes, yes. Dead Bill's the fucking man, dude. I'm so, I'm so hyped because he's working on a new new album. He has like two albums he's working on, but he uh, he did like lead vocal, backup vocal type things in our song Solitude Dance. Dude's got a great voice, um, but he's going to be singing. You know, he, he he's going to be like. Dead Prophet Alive is going to be strictly him. So I'm really, really excited to see what he, you know, because dudes, 
dude's a musical genie. Like him and I think so much alike. I, I am. I'm, I'm. I'm excited to see what he does the future with that project, man. Hell yeah! Well, I mean, speaking of uh, collaborations, you also were just featured on um, Skies of Terra's Invincible Coats. In- Invincibility Coats. Yes, Invincibility it just dropped Codes. yesterday on all all streaming platforms. It's that song, song was a four year journey. If you're watching this, go listen to Skies of Terra Invincibility Codes. That is a banger of a track from start to finish. Yes, it is. I was listening to it earlier. I listened to it like two or three times on repeat. Uh, the part where you come in, I was like, oh, okay. He's, he's doing something a little different here. Well, that 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 song, like I, I said, a four-year journey. Um, somewhere at the beginning of 2020, I want to say it was before COVID really hit. Yeah, it was before COVID really, really hit the United States. Um, Cletus had hit me with that. It was a rough instrumental of it, you know? And like I dug it, but like it had a lot of ironing out that needed done. Um, and like, I kind of wrote parts to it, you know, but like he couldn't figure out how to make it better. And I just with like, because it had these like crazy off time drums and whatnot, like vocally, like I couldn't fit the groove. Like the guitar part was still the same that, you know, but like the, the off time drums, like I couldn't really jive with it. So we ended, he ended up putting it down and then, uh, we came back to it um, in 2022. We were talking about it. And he's like, I'm reworking it. Like, are you still down? And I was like, dude, fuck yeah. Like, you know, and there was times even in between that, whenever I was like, like, when are we going to do that track? That was a pretty solid track. He's like, yeah, like, we'll get to it. We'll, you know, and then he really got on like wanting to get it done. And he gave me the new music. And I was just like, dude, like, yes. And they were like, go ahead and write your part and then we'll work we'll work from the brit you know whatever you do you know we'll work off of that so that was nerve-wracking because i don't know how much of skies of terrorist music you've listened to but like cletus and first one even just vocally cletus and justin they're both very very talented at what they do um cletus has a killer melodic singing voice that fits like kind of like the alternative rock and you know, post hardcore Evo type. You know, he's got that kind of vibe. He has a really weird, interesting tone because, like, he's not whiny, but like, he has a higher range. You know what I'm saying? And Justin, Justin is just brutal. Like, he has this crazy vocal tone that's somewhere between like Randy Blythe and the dude from uh, from Autumn to Ashes. Yes, and just they're both so damn good and then whenever they do you know you mix their styles together it's just like peanut butter and jelly man so i'm just i I have the song i'm like all right like how do i take this crazy spastic dissonant glass jaw metalcore type sounding song and how do i like i i knew i had to send it out with a bang and so like when i finally really got into diving in and recording it I was nervous as fuck sending it over to them, but they were like, dude, oh my God. Like, yeah. And then they come in, they did their stuff. Like, dude, it's a masterpiece. I love that fucking track, man. Yeah. Shout out um, to them guys for having me on. Shout out to all you fuckers for having me on stuff. Why you keep having me on stuff, I don't know. But, dude, yeah, I've I've had the very, I've been very blessed with the fact I've gotten to work with a lot of people, not only in the United States, states but just all over the world yeah. um, you know people collabing with me and having me on their stuff man like i'm that's something i never take for granted uh you know i'm very 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 thankful well i mean i i think what it is man you bring you bring your style to every single track that you are featured on in a different way so it's never like you're not copying what you did in another thing it's always you're looking at this track as what can I do to put my mark on it? Pretty much. Like, my, my, whenever I get a feature, like, I listen, and I, I'm kind of like, because a lot of times people say, like, oh, you don't want to, you don't want to, uh, you don't want to outdo the artist, like, you know, of the composition, you know what I'm saying? Uh-huh. But at the same time, I'm like, I want to make it known. Like, there's a reason they ask me to be on this fucking mm-hmm. track. You know what I mean? No, and, and I don't look at it as a comp, you know, and I, and I look at the way I look at music. I, I look at music like 
especially vocally. Like I look at it kind of like a lead guitar, like kind of like, okay, how am I going to do this to where it's not just there? Like, I want to make it like, I want you to be on the edge of your toes, you know? And that's yeah. honestly, that's a big reason why I shift back and forth from style. So frequently am I, you know, just kind of like, I'm just going at it, feeling that heat and just trying to get you to be like, Holy shit, dude. You know what I'm saying? My, like my whole take on being a collaborator is like, I, I subscribe to the whole Tech Nine method where it's like every time he has a feature, they're going balls to the wall because yes, they wouldn't exactly. put you on that track if you weren't able to. Well, and the thing that pisses me off, I was, I'm not going to say, I'm not going to say the name because that's douchey, you know, and it's ignorant. But like, I was on, um, I was on a cipher a couple years ago, and everybody had this name. A couple, a couple of the people had this name, big name that was up and coming, and they dropped a lot of money. And the dude gave a shit perform, like it was just like, eh, okay, yeah, it, it, like that pissed, like that's not what I want. Like, it, it, even if I'm not the best on this, like on the track, like I wanted to be in it, like you know, I want like, dude went in and he went hard. You know what I'm yeah. saying? Yeah. Well, I mean, like, dude, in all transparency, I wouldn't have went to you if better off dead if I didn't think you had a killer fucking voice. Oh, my God. I, I'll never forget when you sent me that and I heard the hook. I felt, oh, man, JT. I'll give, uh, dude, I'll always give credit where credit's due. That hook just sent that fucking song home, dude. Oh, my God. That was a fun song. It It was, man. I remember when I sent it to you. And you're like, well, let me see what I can do with this. And then I was just like, it's a blank slate from the bridge on. So I just do whatever you want. And then you sent it back to me. I was like, oh, well, holy shit. <laughs> <laughs> well, at, well, at that time when we did it, like people were still going crazy about Will Ramis, the, uh, to the Hellfire. To the hellfire. And I was just like, I'm not going to copy it, but like, I'm like, I want to do something that people are going to be like, what the fuck is this dude doing with his vocal cords? And so, you know, that, that, that was pretty fun for me to do. It was, uh, like that was a fun track to experiment with. I'll tell you forever how much I appreciate you. And I know we're coming up on, it's almost an hour and a half. So I only have a few more questions for you. I'm having such a great time with you, man. Truly. Uh, much love, man. Much love back at you. A little bit behind the scenes. This is actually the first time me and Pat, even though we've been friends for years, like this is the first time we've actually had a long conversation. Yeah. Yeah, I think we've had like one phone call. Yeah. Like like that was a decent, you know, like a decent length, you know, but this is the outside of texting each other, which you and I do text a lot. I guess it's the most we've yeah. ever actually been chatting and whatnot. Yeah, so it's it's nice to know I'm not being catfished, you know, like <laughs> I'm sending you? all my money to you right now to support a, a Nigerian prince or whatever. That's a pretty eye you got there, boy. <laughs> but no, so talking about vocals, man, um, you've really kind of been leaning into a little bit more of your melodic uh, cleans lately. So what's that journey been like? Um, That's a really hard... Uh, well, it comes from the fact that I'm getting older. Um, and, well, that that's another thing, too. Like, going back into, we were talking about, you know, having idiopathic angioedema with me getting sick and whatnot. Like a lot of times, like doing the crazy vocals that I get to do in a lot of songs. Like I don't. Here's something else that annoys. I'm gonna go segue into something else. I don't dislike bands that go into a big studio and have the top notch production and everything. I hate. I hate that singers nowadays. They go in. And I'm not against, you know, pitch correcting, melodon and whatnot. I've recently had Gus start doing that for my vocals. But, like, dude, they have everything so perfect that whenever they go and do it live. They can't do it. They fall on their fight. Yeah. yeah. And that's the thing. I feel like they said, you know, yes, does it sound amazing? 100%. But they're setting themselves up for failure. And another thing that annoys the fuck out of me, too, and I did, like, a mini rant in this in my Bosch video the other day, like they do the people do these 
one take vocal covers. It's one take of them sitting there and lip syncing. Like, yes, did yep. they record the track? 100%. But there's multiple vocal layers. Everything is produced to the fucking T, pitch corrected digitally. And then they're just like, oh, yeah, this would be. And I seen a very, very talented musician and influencer. She got, now granted, I understand it's hard to stay in key if you're a cappella. But she was like, everyone's like, oh, well, like you're doing this. Well, here, I'm going to sing naturally for you. You know, no, no production or anything. And she did it. And it sounded like fucking dog shit. And it's like, you just prove my fucking point. Yep. Yep. But everyone's like, oh, well, it's not industry standard. Uh, you know, but like, that's the thing, dude. And that you, you look at the music we have now and you go back to the 90s, for example. The 90s is the dude, like the 90s was my era. I wish I was a musician in the 90s. Same. In the early 2000s. But Same. like, there's no, when it comes to production quality, the industry nowadays has it so set that everything sounds the same. Mm -hmm. When you go back to the nineties, it didn't matter if it was a metal record, but a lot of the shit, hell we'll go back even further. You take a song like Ozzy Osbourne's crazy train. You know how famous of a song that is. Mm -hmm. Like when you look at the grand picture of it from the industry nowadays, like that sounds like a garage demo yeah. compared to what we have nowadays, yeah. you know, but the thing is, like that song has stood the test of time. You know, it's it, there's grit. You know, it, it, it's, that, that that's pretty much what I'm saying is all the soul has been sucked out of music. It and I has. get so and like and you know, like I'm all about making like goofy, you know, TikToks and reels and whatnot because that's what we got to do. Those are the hoops we got to do to get our shit out there nowadays. Like I'm all about making little videos and lips, but like don't don't. And don't be acting like like that's how you sound. There's a totally different because like me for my for me I like I I produce my own vocals. Like I said here a little bit ago, just recently I started having Gus, you know, tweak stuff here and there, mm -hmm. making sure there's no bum notes or anything. But I don't use do like a lot of crazy shit. Like I can do all that stuff live, but a lot of times, like playing live, like I'm you know sick. Or, you know what I mean? So, like, and, you know, there's other things, you know, like, if you can't hear yourself, you know, you're having a bad, you know, on an off day. Yeah. But like, but, most, yeah. but, like, I, most of the time, what you hear on the recording and what you hear live is the same. And that's a rare fucking thing to find nowadays. It is. And it's a, it's a general rule of thumb I go by. Like, I refuse to record anything unless it's an effect that I can't do live. Because... If like you said, like you you're showing your hand, like you're showing what you can't do, and yeah. it's like you're just you're basically deteriorating your own career before you even have it. Yeah. <laughs> um, and where you were talking about, you know, all the soul being sucked out, it's like with the with my shoegaze metal, like I refuse to let anybody else mix it. It may not be the best, it may not, but it's genuine, it's raw, and like I mean say what you want about music that sounds a thousand times better in my opinion, but it's like, at least it has a depth. Of it has character. Yes. Yes. That's why I like, I like producers like Steve Albini. He's a famous, uh, Kurt. I can't think of his last name. He's the guitarist for Converge. Kurt Ballou. But, oh, oh yeah. 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 Like their stuff's like really, well, look, look, okay. Well, we were talking about Nirvana earlier. Look mm -hmm. at Nevermind versus in utero. Steve yeah. Albini produced like never mind was clean across the board, as polished as it could be. And then you go to in U in utero, where yeah, they were a little more experimental per se on that album, but like that was that sounded like Nirvana live. Like that is the essence and the soul of Nirvana. All that grittiness, that ugh, you know what I mean? Like that that he caught them get them guys amazingly in that record and that's yeah. what it's all about dude yeah, yeah it is and i just i wish there was more soul to like actual music anymore man because like you said everything sounds a dime a dozen now like it, well, it, it, well that's the other thing too about music is like we've reached a pinnacle where i mean I, i'm sure there's going to be more you know i'm sure at some point something new will pop up but like we've kind of done everything at this point 
Yeah. You know, and like now, like, you know, we have country rappers, you know, uh, just like, you know, there's so much mixing and matching with John, which is cool. It's awesome. But yeah. like, that's kind of what we have to do. Like, there's no like original sound. Like, holy shit, nobody's ever done that before. Like, it's all been done at this point. You know what I'm saying? Well, I mean, it's like, you know, every every song is a sample of something that's been in the past. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. No, you're 100 percent, dude. Like, yeah, no. Every, everybody like, gets upset I, about that. But I mean, it's the truth. But like, I, I feel like when we're talking about the soul, I, I, you know, I don't necessarily doubt the soul of the musicians making the music, but it kind of gets to a point like where it's just, it's all been done before. You've heard this, you know what I mean? Yeah. And then the other thing too, is like bands that are, you know, legit trying to make it, you know, they're spending the money, they're playing the shows, you know, they're going to the top notch studios and whatnot. Like they unfortunately have to succumb to that. Yeah. Uh, you know, to get out there, like you hear it all. I, I friends of mine that have, you know, toured with big acts and whatnot like they've talked about like going into the studio and then the producer you know throwing their hand in the mix and diluting it down because like they'll pretty but they'll flat out tell them and they're they're right to a point you know that's cool at all but like nobody's gonna listen to that do it this way and then yeah. they you know they're like oh shit well like you know we want everyone to hear us we want to be famous that you know so you know th they do that so it kind of comes i mean and I'm not, I'm not saying that's wrong either because, you know, that's they they want to do that. You know what I mean? Like they want to get the big dream, but it's a matter of whether you're willing to compromise that or not. I mean, yeah, it's a like it's a double edged sword. I mean, obviously, I've never had that opportunity. But to me, it's like, whoa, you're great. We can make you sound commercial, though, but you have to compromise character. Well, well that that's kind of like. And I forget this a lot of times um, with Seethe because I, and I've gotten a lot of love for Seethe. Honestly, I'm so very blessed that mm -hmm. I've gotten as far in my career as a solo artist, you know, doing the music that I do. But I often forget because Seethe is, it's glitchy, it's distorted. Like it's very well produced, but it, it, it's almost produced in a way to sound like shit. You know, it, not that it sounds like, but it's very experimental. It's very weird. And it, it's, it's a harder thing to market where non-stitch method, non-stitch method, like people love right from the get-go. And, but it, it's a more palatable mainstream, you know, type vibe, you know what I mean? It, it, but uh, on the same, and I've, and like people were really digging the good morning wrath EP and they're like, I love it. But at the same time, like, it, it's like, eh, like this is like, I wanted to do something a little different, but that's not, that's like, I'm not going to that style completely. Like, the crazy clue like that seethe to me when you listen to seethe like to me like that's what my brain sounds like you know that's like that's how i sound I you know mean, what I, you're, that, that, that's just how you know like to me like that's it being like wrapped in my head for a day i yeah sporadic and claustrophobic there's some melody a lot of screaming you know crazy glitchy little bit of melody to follow you know, but it, it's just distorted. It's a fucking, yeah, it's just, you know. We'll see. I, like, maybe this sounds a little bit elitist, but to me, I take that as an indictment on the listener for not wanting to be challenged. Well, I mean, that's that's the thing, too. I mean, music is so, I don't, it's so subjective, you know what I mean? Everybody's got different tastes, and people's tastes change over time. Yeah, yeah. You know? But it's just a matter of, you know, because you have people that love that experimental. And then you have people that, you know, they want to listen to, you know, pop music. And there's nothing wrong with that. No, no. But, uh, you know, it's just, but, you know, the harsher the sound, the smaller your audience and your demographic is going to be. That's just proof of fact. Well, I mean, yeah. And it's unfortunate, too, because a lot of people prefer the, the formulaic sound versus... Yeah. Like it's easy. anything that's Stays, different. Yeah, exactly. But that's that's just, you know, that's how it's always been. And that's how it always will be. Yeah, I know. And going back to your point where you were saying you don't think, you know, we'll hear anything original. I think something original could happen, but I don't think it will be in our lifetime. I agree with that 100%. Uh, I think as much as people hate it, 
I think AI will be the next step in revolutionizing music. It's exciting and it's very, very scary at the same time. Oh, yeah. Because the way, well, here, okay, so we're talking about music and soul and whatnot. Here's something that pisses me off. And I understand why people do it because it's cool. But like you have, and again, too, like it all goes back to the product you present, too. You know, just sometimes you try and it just sounds like shit. You know, it doesn't, it doesn't mm-hmm. meet the standard. But, you know, you look up somebody covering a song and they'll do great but because they haven't hit the algorithm you know or have you know the following Mm -hmm. it gets maybe a couple hundred views over 10 years you know but people make these audio generated chester bennington or hell even plankton singing you know singing a song you know it's ai generated you know completely digital you know and it those things get millions and millions and millions of views you know what i mean like it's already happening we're already in the thrust in the myth of that's not the word i'm looking for but it's definitely going to be interesting to see where it goes because that's the, obviously this is the next step the ai and the you know technology age but what comes after that and i think you're 100 percent right in saying like it's not going to be in our lifetime i i mean I think that with the dawn of not even dawn of AI, because like AI has been around for a long while, like people hadn't really heard about it or talked about it until what the last decade. But I mean, I think us as a music industry, because of the rise of AI, we're on like this planned obsolescence. I think that, you know, there's going to be no need for us because why, why sing when you can just get a voice model to go do this for you? Yeah. Like, one of the most egregious things and look if you do it you do it but like there's websites where you can get an ai feature of a certain vocalist um and i'm like that's not that's that's not a feature in a song you're feeding it the lyrics and then you're pitch correcting you're doing everything that an ai is doing it's not an actual human like it's like it bothers me so much man it really does Another thing that's going to be interesting, in my opinion, because I I mean, I'm sure people are dealing with it right now, but like on the business side of that, because, okay, like you have a BMI, like, for example, uh, we'll say better off dead. Okay. JT, you sang, wrote lyrics. I sang and wrote lyrics. Mad Tracker made the beat. Okay. Mm -hmm. So that's how the world, you know, that's how it's divvied up. But like, what do you do with AI art? You know, what you're into, like you pay your artist and whatnot. Like, how, what do you do? You know what I'm saying? Like, who gets the credit? Who gets the royalty? You know what I mean? Is there some kind of, uh, you, you know, from the legal end of things, where does that go and how does that work? That's yeah. going to be interesting to see what happens too. Yeah. Uh, I'm, I'm a part of several different comic book groups and, Look, in all transparency, I've used AI art before because, like, I thought it would be cool. Um, better well, off dead. It, it is it, a cool tool. I'm not going to lie. Is, is. Like, honestly, and I'll be real with you. Like, like a lot of people, like, dude, I'm an artist on a budget. Yeah, like, dude. I have gotten a pretty damn good at taking shit and figuring out how to work with it to get the job done. Yeah. And it's a tool, dude. Like I, I um, we used AI for for the Room Four Hundred and Ninety EP. We used AI for that. It, like I had an it. Like I tried making the art for it, and like I just couldn't get the vibe. So I was, I hit up Gus, and I was like, "Hey, like, you think you could try, you know, working that AI stuff to get?" The, and he gave me like four different covers in like an hour. And so I was like, "Okay, that's cool." Now, do I want to do that every time? No, because I genuinely enjoy making my artwork and whatnot but it was a cool tool you know and it didn't didn't cost anything you know what i'm saying yeah and that's like it's easy to get up on the high horse with ai art especially as an artist where it's like well you're taking from this so and so but put it on that flip side where you're also getting people that would have never had a chance to have any kind of artwork like this for a song that they're putting out that could mean a lot to them yeah exactly 100 percent and, I mean, and boy, it, it goes back to anything, you know. This is a this is a conversation we've been having throughout the years, you know, as far as like 
going into the AI age and whatnot, you know, and just, you know, modern technology progressing and stuff. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like, like for example, like you, you used to have, like we said earlier, you used to have to go to a multi-million dollar. I've been to a multi-million dollar studio. One time I did a feature for my buddies in the band Lost in the Mutiny. Um, oh, shit. We drove out to Detroit, Michigan. And we went into that studio and it was a cool experience. I loved it. But at the same time, I hated it. I just, I was out of my element. Um, and I, I honestly, I'll be real. I, I didn't like the way my vocals were produced in that song. Mm. I thought my parts were solid, but like, I just, I didn't like the way they were produced and mixed and mastered. Kind of flattened. I'll, I'll be real with you. I like what me, I thought what me and Gus do, you know, and, and that's another thing too. That's been a learning curve. Like, you know, that I've had to work on over the years is, you know, my production and whatnot, because I have a certain sound that I want to achieve. Yeah. And I figured out how to kind of do it. But, um, but like, I figured out how to do it from home. Why well, go to a multi million dollar studio when I can do it at home and then ship it off to the guy who knows how to put the cherry on top? You know what I'm saying? Yeah. It's to me, social media has provided a outlet where it's like, you know, if you're a musician, <laughs> it really doesn't matter if you're good. Like you, you're out there. Like you're, you're, yeah. you're, you're oversaturated though, like in my opinion. And to me, a lot of times the people that stand out for me are the ones that aren't professionally produced. I feel it. Yeah. Cause well, it's like, that's the thing. That, that's the thing too. Okay. Going back to the soul of music. Sorry for me for taking it, but like, do it. I like Like a lot of times whenever I listen to a band, I like to go back. Me and my brother used to do this all the fucking time. Uh, especially like you remember like in, in, in like 2005 to like, 2010 you remember how like you could go to blog spots and get on media media shit, yes. media fire and all that okay but like you know you used to be able to like not just download you know the album you know you wanted but like you could go back and find like the og fucking tapes and early recordings yeah. like that was my shit that's what i used to listen to you know um i'll look at okay uh blah, 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 blah. what's a band i'm thinking of um try okay I understand the bad. I know what you're getting ready to say. Rap, <laughs> you know, the trapped has put on themselves in recent years. Oh, you know, you're but like canceled now. <laughs> yes, yes, but like uh, their EP, the Enigma EP. Oh like, hell yeah! Before they, yeah, there's a couple songs on it that ended up on the self-titled record, but like those demos, like dude, I fucking jam the shit out of them. Like I'll yeah. take them over the. You know, like ones that went out on Warner Brothers any day of the week. And like there's been multiple, multiple artists that are like, yeah. hell, um, what was, uh, okay, Linkin Park before they got big? Oh, uh, Plan, or, uh, uh, well, they were Hybrid Theory before they yeah, got big. Yeah, but it wasn't, the, the, the EP had the baby's face on it. It was like a baby doll. Oh, which I can't one? remember. Um, was it Carousel. Plan? Car okay. Carousel. Yeah. That was, a, but like, like that, like, like that that just the gritty like it sounded good was it as good as obviously like the perfect you know the professional mixes they would get going into the big studios no. after they got signed no but like dude there was just such a grittiness and just an energy to it you know it was it felt natural you know it wasn't yeah yeah yeah, yeah. like i could go on about this topic for days oh my lord but you get the vibe i'm laying down here with it yeah it's Man, I miss those days. <laughs> Dude, I know. <laughs> like when you said blog spot, I was like immediately. When I said what? Back, blog spot. Oh, yeah, yeah. I was like immediately taken back to finding all these suspicious Russian links to RAR documents that I had to unzip and learn how to. Yes, yes. <laughs> yep. Yep. 100%. Yeah. Like kids today, I'm literally saying that now is kids today have no idea what it was like. No, dude, not a clue. Not, dude. We used to stay up all night. Those are some of my happiest memories with my brother. We would just be staying up all night. We like, I'd be in my room, he he'd be in his room, and like, we would just send emails back and forth. Be like, yo, I found this. He'd be like, yo, I found this. <laughs> and then we had the okay. So we had the iPods, obviously, but um, the very short-lived Zoom players. You remember that? I always wanted one, dude. 
I, okay. So I got like, it was like a 200 gigabyte one. It was huge. It was like a big, you know, it was, it was big. I'll never forget my wife back. Her and I had just started dating. I was in college. I, I spent like 150, 200 bucks on this big ad, you know, so I could put all my music on it. And I had a, uh, I stayed over at work and I was waiting until she got off work. We were going to go, go out somewhere. So I was finishing, you know, I was in the break room and I was working on a paper and whatnot, you know, and would you know, I left the fucking backpack on the trunk of the car and it stayed on until we got onto the highway and I realized it. So we turned back around, dude, my books were torn to shreds all over the highway. My papers are everywhere. The Zune was crushed into a million fucking pieces. Oh, my God. That's unfortunate. So what What did I like? I'm like, I can't just tell. Like, I gathered up as much as I could. Like, I brought in all the pieces to the puzzle that I could to my professors. I'm like, this really, really stupid yet tragic thing happened. Can I get an extension? I'm not bullshitting you. Here it is. There's the tire track marks right there on that page right there. <laughs> You know, I was like, he's... <laughs> I'm just imagining that and the professor being like, are you fucking... Oh, kidding? man, dude. <laughs> but, man, I know we're we're coming up. We we ran long, and I knew we would. Like, it's just the way we are, we're man. All, we're almost on two... Oh, holy crap, we're almost on two hours at this point. Yeah, Holy's dude. Day. It I'm doesn't feel like it. It feels like we just started. <laughs> I know, I know. And there's so much more we could actually talk about, so that's me extending to another episode if you want, man. I would love to have you back on. I'd love to be back. Hell yeah. So, Anytime, buddy. <laughs> where can they find you? I know I got the whole sieve uh, follow down there, but where else can they find you? I know you're on Instagram and TikTok. Um, you can find me on Instagram, TikTok, um, Facebook, YouTube. Um, all my music is on all my streaming platforms. Um, yeah, it's not hard to find me. Uh, check it out. I got two brand new EPs dropping. I have a rather long discography i got plenty of tunes to check out um if you like stuff of the electronic and new metal type vibe uh yeah we got a we got some cool i i got a lot of cool stuff that's happening this year um i don't want to say too too much until announcements are released but it's it's going to be a good year um thank you so much for having me on dude we've been talking about this forever it was great to finally sit down and chat and whatnot it Um, it really was man dude like it 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 feels like, uh, I mean, obviously talking to an old friend, but like legitimately, I could just sit here and talk for hours. Like it's just yeah. how it's always been yeah. with us. Yeah, one hundred percent, one hundred percent. Getting to be able to actually do it and not have a time constraint was really fucking dope. <laughs> yes, yes, absolutely, <laughs> absolutely. Shout out to my wife for keeping the kids at bay so I could talk to you for two hours. <laughs> yes, <laughs> she's the real MVP here, dude. Major um, shout out to her because, like, but I, man. I, I, uh, I, I guess before I get off here, um, I like to say to everybody, like I said, my music's aggressive, it's angry, but I preach love. Yeah. You are worth it. You know what I mean? Get help. Yeah. Um, and then two, like we only get a little bit of time on this rock. If you want to do something, you know, obviously aside from, you know, bad stuff like rape and cults and hurting other people or animals you know don't do that that's bad don't do that yeah but i mean like it doesn't do if it makes you happy do it yeah if they say oh you have no reason doing that you suck uh you know what fuck them yep do it anyway you only live once exactly you never know until you try no it's 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 a profound message too, man, that I wish more people would listen to. But man, with that, I will also say, uh, finally able to announce that you and I have been working on a new track. Uh, this one, man, this has been forever, right? Like, I think you gave it to me around the time we were doing the cipher. So it would have been back of like spring of last year. Yeah, dude. Um, that's hard to believe, right? And time like, flies to, dude to see i honestly don't to. well hell, we're already in the march of this year i don't know how man like, it feels i feel like, like I, I feel like two weeks ago we were having a party for new year's right but it's, man, it's fast, I'm, man 
I'm so stoked. Old. I, I really am. It's going to be a banger. Uh, I think it's cool. It's going to be a good track, man. It's something I hadn't done yet, like the style. So I'm like, I'm I'm always wanting to expand and do different shit, even if it's not necessarily good. But, you know, that's just me. <laughs> I must say, being the one that had to engineer your vocals, you crushed it. <laughs> he says that, but then he's like, I added like a shit ton of Melodyne, and then I got another screamer. <laughs> no, 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 no. This, this song's a beast. It is. Um, I got to get that sent over to Gus as soon as possible because I want that thing out um for those that are listening it's gonna be <laughs> the newest drop from six scars featuring my boy Steve. uh it's gonna be called abusement park i'm so very stoked for that one man um, you blew me away once again i was like what the fuck <laughs> Dude, like, you, like, legitimately, you sent it to me, and I'm like, how, how, how does he make these? Things? Okay, so, so let me ask you a question, not to keep this conversation because we keep trying to wrap this up, but we keep talking at the same time. But like, as a singer, okay, so <coughs> you've obviously collabed with people, you've worked with different people before. Mm -hmm. When it's not your track and you're featuring on somebody else's song, how do you feel sending over your stems? Okay, um, like even when I still send them to you, I get nervous as fuck. See, like I, I think it's just the thing with singers, musicians in general, but singers typically tend to have it worse because, like, for as confident as I am in my abilities, I'm unconfident. I get it, dude. Like, I really even, do. like, well, you just said you're nervous sending shit to me. I'm ner nervous sending shit to you, to Yeti, to. Justin and Cleve, Gus, whoever, it doesn't matter who it is. You know what I mean? Like, I always get, like, I'm just like, I hope they like it. Yeah, it, there's always that part of me where it's like, uh, maybe I should have done this differently before sending it to them. Uh, oh, uh, they're, oh, God, they're going to fucking block me and think that I'm horrible. <laughs> but we are, I mean, a, we are a fickle creature, my friend. I think that we're just trying to get the best out of each other, though. Like, you and me, when we, we share music with each other, like, we're not brutal about it, but we're opinionated. Like, yeah. we're trying to get the best out of each other. I 100%. And, <laughs> 100%. I don't think. Like, I'm not, like if you send me something, like, I'm, I'm, I'm not just going to be like, oh, oh dude, it's that's great. great. Oh, yeah. it's perfect. It's great. Do it. You know what I mean? Like, I'm going to be like, mm, like, you can. And, I, and I'd expect the same from you. You've told me that, too. You know what I mean? It's just. Yeah. Go back to the drawing board. Try again. Yeah, absolutely. Not every idea is a good idea. And, you know, just sometimes just as much as you want to try something, just sometimes it don't pan out. Yeah. Like, at least you can say you tried. Keep it for your own personal collection. Exactly. Move exactly. On. Like, it doesn't necessarily have to be a release. But while I have you, man, I know you, you've you given me so much of your time, dude. But I just want to say, like, over the last several years, you've really, you, you've been a rock for me like in a lot of times dude uh especially like a year or so ago man I, I don't have to get into it but i i know i leaned on you pretty heavy in those times and uh you were one of very few that checked in on me man and that meant the world to me but that really did um lean on me yeah exactly when you're not strong and it's like you know to 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 see where the friendship has evolved to has been really cool man because like this genuinely started with better off dead like if you really think about it like that's when our genuine yeah, pretty much like really began man pretty and much it's only been a year and it's like now i can't imagine not you know fucking messaging you when i look exactly when i'm at work or something 100 percent, dude 100 but it's like man. you know for for everything you've done not just for six scars man but like to literally being a mentor like you really are dude like you've helped me navigate different roads and everything else and it's just i appreciate you man likewise brother likewise well dude with that we are going to wrap up our long-winded episode <laughs> So, brother, thank you, man. You went beyond the breakdown with six cigars tonight. How you feeling? I'm feeling pretty good, buddy. It was a, I had a great time. I was glad to be here. I was looking forward to this all week. Hell yeah, dude. Me too. It was a, it was a stressful day. You got to come on here and just let off some steam. So yes, it, was, it was really fun. 
uh, got into some serious episode topics as always, but ended on a high note, man. Yes, sir. So Absolutely. With with heading out, man, what would you uh, what would you say to somebody that's going through something right now? Other than hang on, but what would you say? Um. The fish lips is a good one. I'm drawing. I'm drawing a blank here. Okay. Okay. Normally, I'm quick. I'm, sometimes I'm quick on my feet, and other times I'm not. And this time, I am not quick on my feet. Well, I worded oh. it wrong too. So, how would you? What would you say to somebody that went through something that you did? Besides, hang on. Keep. Um. Um. I would start by saying, don't go to Heritage Valley. Um, mental health clinic. That was hell. <laughs> I mean, not having to go to any is really. Now, um, I, I would, I, I would say, find something you like to do. Yeah. Dive into that. Like, dive into that. Yeah. A hobby. It could be music, painting, hell, even landscaping, stuff like that. Find something you like to do. Dive into it. Hell yeah. That's exactly what I would tell them. I know I kind of put you on the spot there, man. So thank you, dude. It. It's always really cool to hear what people would say to somebody else because you never know what somebody who's listening to this is going through. They might be experiencing something like you. So, brother, I will let you go, man. This has been a hell of a ride tonight. Sounds good, my G. Thank, thank you so much for having me on, JP. I had a blast. A pleasure thank was all you, mine. Tell Becca and the kids that uh, I said thank you. <laughs> sure, I will. <laughs> and I'll catch you later, Pat. Yes, sir. Sounds like a plan. See you, man. So everybody, I mean, two hours with Steve was pretty freaking epic. So uh, without further ado, let me announce next week's guest. Carbon Stone. I cannot believe it. You're talking to a kid who was listening to Carbon Stone at 15, 16 years old, and here he is at 33 getting to interview Corey. So be sure to tune in next week as we go beyond the breakdown. Thank you so much for tuning in. This has been an epic night. Much love. Be good to each other. Be good for each other. I'll see you on the next one.